everyone. It's Monica. Welcome back to Because Jesus Bible Journaling. Today's video is going to be a little bit heavy, so I do want to forewarn you about that. It does have to do with the current events. I'm even interrupting my upload schedule to bring you this video, so keep that in mind as you watch on. But first, I just wanted to share something with you. Today, I am going to be using some products that you haven't seen me use before, and I do talk about those in some later videos that are coming your way, but I also go more in depth about them on a new YouTube channel that I am launching tomorrow. So you will be able to access a lot more information about the art supplies I'm using, my own art journey. All of this information is going to be on a new channel that I'm creating called Artsy Bits. And so if you are interested in stuff like that and you want to see more of my own kind of behind the scenes artistic journey and different supplies and things I'm trying out, I've created this new channel. So it's going to go live tomorrow if you're watching this video the day it was uploaded. And in order to access those videos, there is a link in the description box below this that says subscribe to my Artsy Bits channel. And that's the name of the new channel, Artsy Bits. And I'm just going to be sharing with you guys a little bit of my art journey, a little bit of my experience with using different types of artistic supplies and things. And I think you're really going to enjoy it. It'll be a little bit different from this channel, which is why I'm keeping it separate. But I did want to announce that as you continue to watch this video today, you are going to see some things and I'm going to mention some supplies that you probably haven't seen me use before on this channel. And I'm not going to go into depth on the art supplies I'm using today, but more in-depth information on the supplies is found over on that other channel and will also be in upcoming videos on this channel a little bit more. So I'm kind of throwing this video in out of place, a little bit out of order, if you will. So hopefully that makes sense. Leave any questions or comments down below. I'm excited to launch this new channel and I hope that a lot of you guys will come over there with me and maybe just enjoy seeing me learn. I am by no means an expert artist or anything like that, but I'm just on a journey and I wanted to share that with you guys. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe link down in the description box below, and I hope to see you over there. Okay, at this point, we are gonna go ahead and switch gears a little bit and talk about this Bible page in Deuteronomy chapter 10. This page I created in memory of the lives that are currently being lost among the populations of color, especially in our country, the United States. So I've written here Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd and too many others. And the reality is there are too many names to list. In fact, I ran across this really gorgeous graphic that was created by, by Chanel on Facebook. And these are by no means an exhaustive list, but consider this a portion of the lives that have been lost in our country recently. It has to do with racism in our country, and I want to talk about that a little bit today and talk about how we can react to it in a godly way and be more like Jesus to everyone around us. I'm going to read the scripture to you in just a minute here, but I do want to mention that I am sliding a book underneath the front cover of my Bible here just to make it a little more level. Sometimes when you work either at the front or the back of your Bible, it can get kind of wonky. And so that's just a tip to make this easier for you. So I'm going to begin sketching a funeral wreath here with these Prismacolor Coal Erase colored pencils. So they're basically erasable colored pencils, maybe a step above the Crayola erasable colored pencils. I'm just trying them out. Again, I'll go into more depth about them on my other channel, but let me read to you out of Deuteronomy chapter 10 from the New Living Translation. Verses 17 through 19 say, For the Lord your God is the God of gods and Lord of lords. He's the great God, the mighty and awesome God, who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. He ensures that orphans and widows receive justice. He shows love to the foreigners living among you and gives them food and clothing. So you too must show love to foreigners, for you yourselves were once foreigners in the land of Egypt. Now I want to be very clear as I am reading this that I do not view people of color in our country as foreigners. Many, many, many of them are American and they are citizens of this country. So please don't take it that way. But I believe that the view here would have been similar to how white folks sometimes in America view 
people of color as something other than what they are, something different, maybe even something to be feared, something that they don't know what to think. It's just a whole thing. So in this picture here, I'm painting a funeral wreath, and this is to commemorate the lives that have been lost in our recent history in America. And it's absolutely heartbreaking uh, what has happened. And equally as heartbreaking are some of the riots and looting that is happening. I want to differentiate looting from protesting because I believe that protesting peacefully, marching, this has to happen in order to bring about change. But at least in my city, the looting that we saw was actually done by young white kids. And there were actually people of color at this particular protest that happened in our city, just begging people to please stop looting, stop damaging property. This is not the way to go about it. So just want to be clear on that point. So basically what I've done here so far on the page is I've grabbed my set of gouache and gouache is amazing. It's kind of like watercolor, but it's opaque and you can paint over it. So as you see, as I'm adding these pink flowers, it's covering up that wreath and the green background with no problem at all. This is so much fun, you guys. I'm loving these and I can't wait to share them more with you. But I went ahead and decided to do this because this wreath is so layered with flowers and because it will be so densely packed with colors, I wanted to be able to use some sort of paint or color that I could put down a background and then kind of build on top of it. So you're gonna just see me walking through that process today. This is a funeral wreath and it is inspired by 1-800-Flowers. So I do wanna give credit that I was working from a reference photo and it just inspired me here. I used to work at a flower shop and I remember putting these wreaths together and it's always a little bit heavy when you're making one of these in the flower shop because you know that a life has been lost. And in this case, I'm creating one in my Bible here to commemorate the many, many, many too many lives that have been lost in our country in the recent history and in our past history. And so I do want to go into that a little bit. I'm going to flash something up on the screen here real quick. These are some statistics and facts that I found, and I will also have the website address for this so that you can go research it. This is all sourced properly. So if you want to pause and read these facts over, I found them very educational. But basically, the gist here is it's letting us know racism does persist in America today. Now, the next screen I also found super interesting. So again, feel free to pause it if you're interested in seeing some more details. These are some facts having to do with racism in our churches. And this is where it really hit home with me as well <laughs> on two levels. One, as an American, that first screen of facts hits me hard. But also this one hits me hard as a believer. And we need to be more like Jesus in our churches. We need to somehow get to the point where it's not the most segregated hour in the week in the United States of America. So I don't want to start any fights. I don't want to be controversial, but I really feel strongly one of the things that has stuck with me as I have been reading the news and trying to grapple with the fact that I'm a white woman and I feel very privileged to walk around the streets, to look at my phone, to do all sorts of normal activities without fear. I can do things in my car, like pick up my phone, which is illegal, but at a stoplight, I could pick it up and change the song that's playing or do something like that without fear of being pulled over, really. Why? Because I'm a white woman. If I was a black man doing that, that's grounds that could get you pulled over. It's not unlikely. So I've been really grappling with this fact that I'm a white woman, that I'm very privileged. I'm privileged for the way I grew up. I'm privileged for the way that I walk through the world today. And I've been trying to figure out, what am I supposed to do? I have to do something. This is too much. I can't take it anymore. I watched the video of George Floyd being murdered, and I can't take it anymore. I can't be silent. And so one thing that's really stuck with me is this idea of not just being against racism, but being anti-racist. And so I want to speak up about this. This is one way that I feel like I can do something. I have almost 10,000 subscribers on this channel, and my hope is that this motivates you the same way that I have felt motivated lately to go ahead and start seeing things and not remaining silent and not just standing by 
and continuing to pray, but pray even stronger and pray even harder that Jesus would just come. Let your spirit shine forth in our nation, and we need your guidance, Lord Jesus. We need to be a nation of justice and a nation of hope and a nation of safety for people of all races and all colors. This is just ridiculous to me that we're in 2020, and this is still something that we're dealing with. So I'm sorry to talk so strongly, but I'm not sorry to be talking about it right now. So I hope that you can extend grace to me. If I'm saying things wrong, especially to my viewers of, of color and my friends of color, I apologize. I'm still learning, but I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> so today I'm just grieving as I worked on this wreath and it's come to completion here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add the words in memory. And this was just kind of a step I could take in prayer, in my own process of grieving, and really stand with the families who are losing their sons and their daughters and their mothers and their fathers and brothers and sisters. These are our people, and we need to stand up for them. We need to remember them. And may this just stop happening in our country. Can I get an amen? <laughs> it's just too much right now. So I'm using my Faber-Castell pens, my Pit Artist pens, and these are the brush tip ones just to thicken up these words in memory. And you guys, this is really hard. I just wanted to add a couple names here. I could have added many more. That's why I included that clip of the graphics of all the names of even more people who have been lost. And I just wrote down Ahmaud Arbery and George Floyd because in my personal life, those two, I think, for whatever reason, have hit me really hard. I'm not sure if it's because I've done the most research on them or what, but here's the hope. If you jump up to verse 16, it says, circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart. And that's kind of a weird thing. My daughter was reading this and she's like, why is it talking about circumcision? But I was explaining to her, this is our invitation to change. We need to shave off the part of our heart that keeps us in ignorance of racism in our country today. And we need to stand up for Ahmad. We need to stand up for George. We need to stand up for all these lives that have been lost. And we need to say, we are Jesus to these people. If Jesus was here, he would be standing and helping and bringing justice to orphans and widows, minorities, foreigners, and we want to stand and do the same. So this video goes out to them. It's done in memory of them. And again, I am hoping that the heaviness and the weightiness of this didn't discourage you too much, but I do want to share it. I feel like it's one step I can take. Stay devoted and stay strong. Keep going with anti-racism so that someday this world will be a better place.